Hello and good morning. I'm so happy to be here and to see you all at this Cloud Native Telco Day. Yeah, it's fantastic to be here in this lovely city, Valencia. Um, I hope we will have an amazing day sharing experience and things we want to work on in our Telco community. I would like to thank for the opportunity to be here and share our thoughts and learnings. I'm looking forward for further discussion during today. And yeah, I'm happy to, to take all your questions. I'm very excited to tell you more about our cloud native journey with the 5G core and our learnings at Swisscom. So this talk will be useful for you if you are interested to hear about our experience and learnings from our cloud native telco journey of an ambitious team building a 5G, 4G converged core at Swisscom. So unfortunately, um, Ruben is not able to join today. He is moving from Swisscom to AWS to pursue a new opportunity, but <laughs> Nevertheless, we, we prepared this presentation together. He gave me a lot of thoughts, ideas, helped me to, to get to the essence, what to present here. So I need to say a big thank you for you, Ruben, to help me to stay here today. And yeah, it was a pleasure to work with you. So well, now a little bit more about myself and my background. My name is Joshua Hiller. Um, yeah, I'm so to say a newbie in public speaking, but um, I work now since a while with cloud technology as well as cloud native technologies. So I started over 15 years ago at Swisscom as a system engineer or network engineer and recently moved to Australia to work for Telstra, but because of COVID I came back or yeah, the travel restriction we had in Australia. And now I'm working at Swisscom again as a product owner for the 5G subscriber management. I as well have a very strong passion about agile and lean way of building um, services. And yeah, during my time at Telstra, I really could experience in the daily work how Agile and, and also using Scrum could really like improve our daily work and have more, be able to be more innovative as well, yeah, have more fun at work in the end. So, yeah, who we are? So, Swisscom is the major telecommunication provider in Switzerland and has one of the, let's say, best network worldwide. At Swisscom, we really engage in ambitious technology and cultural transformation towards a cloud native readiness. Um, in the end, we believe that, that it is essential component to keep thriving in this increasingly competitive environment. So at mobile networks, our group, we develop and operate this new 5G, 4G converged core. Yeah, we have been closely working with our network function vendor Ericsson in an agile setup. So we have people from Ericsson in our DevOps team and we closely work together with them to, to build and deploy and operate our 5G core in the end. So we realized very early that it's not only a technology shift, it also is a transformation on skills, culture, and how we collaborate with each other. So there we, yeah, for, there is this new technology paradigm where we need like really a different mindset, culture, and skills. So on the technology challenge, there is really the skill gaps we see in the telco ecosystem. So there, yeah, we need the new skills, which are more software engineering to help to build this cloud native workloads in the end. So there we have this transformation journey where we embrace on the change. So we want to learn to forge new paths, to be more innovative in the end, 
to learn to permanently evolve our status quo and learn to continuously improve ourselves. So these are three key pillars for our cultural transformation at Swisscom. Now, a little bit more about what I want to tell you today. So first, we start with our cloud native readiness with this cultural and technology transformation. Then a little bit about this rich CNCF ecosystem we can leverage in the telco space and as well the huge opportunity to really automate all our um, services in the end. And then our cloud native journey. So there I will tell you a bit about our hands-on experience and as well then on the third point, discovery and learnings. So there it's really about our findings, which we mainly can put into four pillars. So one is about decoupling of network function, infrastructure, or CAS. Then the other thing is about the configuration management, where we see a lack of maturity in the moment, as well on the more on the architecture standardization aspect, as well then on the yeah, service observability. And last, we have some call for improvements. I would like then to, to give some suggestion on where we need to work as a telco industry to make our end-to-end -end services really cloud native capable. So what we do, so I would like to tell you some more details about what we do at Swisscom. As mentioned, we engage in ambitious technology and cultural transformation towards a cloud native readiness. To be successful in this, we started to, to build a new like, domain. We call this cloud native mobile cloud native services where we brought together uh, software engineer, telco engineer, cloud engineers. We even found new teams to build a, a service management tool, which I will come on later, and really have from a design view to an operating view to a life cycle view, all the people in one to domain to make this successful. Then, yeah, we we started to integrate this 5G network where we deploy this to our uh, NFVI cloud for now. But on the other hand, just half a year ago, we started our public cloud journey. So we work now closely with AWS where we collaborate to bring our 5G core to to the AWS regions in the end, where soon they will also open a region in Switzerland. As well then, as said before, we, we started with two new teams building in-house a service management framework or tool. So there we as Swisscom really see that it's key for an operator or a telco to have this capability to design end-to-end -end services. So not only like the 5G core itself, but really end-to-end -end that you can then operate network slices at a scale. And then also what we started is to, to go in a GitOps journey. So we already had the, the Etsy Mono stack to deploy network functions, but we see that this was not so cloud native at the beginning, so we started to build our own GitOps pipeline in the end to be able to deploy and lifecycle the 5G, 4G converged core. Um, now, some more details on the Etsy Mano. So I created as well some hashtags. I would very appreciate if you could maybe Tell me your thoughts about this, and, and yeah, also if you have any questions around this. So we have SEMA here, which is our service management tool, which is based on Etsy, or we can design NSDs. 
So network service definition uh, templates, which then can talk to an NFVO in the middle. But on the other hand, this SEMA is as well able to, to push all the, the YAMLs.value or the stuff you need to be able to configure to the GitOps pipeline or to Git in the end. And here we also then have for the CNF lifecycle management, we have the VNFM, which then do the deployment towards the CAS. And as well, we are working on, on an automation on the DC gateway. But this here is like just half of the full picture because what's missing here is the whole end-to-end -end configuration management, which will, which, where I will shed some lights on later. And then um, we have our GitOps pipeline. So here on the, on the left side, we get the software from our vendors in our, into our artifactory. Then we have our overarching Jenkins pipeline, where we have different supply pipelines to source software, to get notification and trigger other pipelines. Then we have a configuration pipeline for the application configurations. We have an, an element manager pipeline and as well some test pipelines. And all this is based on the source of truths we have in Git. So everything which we configure or want to, to add to our environment, we define in Git and then we use in, for the deployment of the containers, we use Flux to deploy like an AMF in this case. So it takes the config from Git, then goes to the artifactory, take the, the Docker image and the Helm charts and deploy the network functions. And then after this, it's able to trigger the configuration pipeline, which then use Ansible as well. Ansible is asking Git for all the day two or the application configuration, and then push this configuration over netconf to to the uh, CNFs in the end. So today, the CNFs we have, they are mainly using netconf. And there we see uh, some other things I want to talk later about. And also here, I created the hashtag at, on Twitter. So I'm curious to hear your ideas, questions about this. So. Yeah, during our journey, we explored different things. We had a lot of learnings. So here, we, we, could group the, we can group this like in four different pillars. So first is the, we still see a lot of vertical integration with the appliance towards CAS and even underlying infrastructure, which is mainly also due to um, telco specific protocols and um, requirements in the end. Then, yeah, missing configuration management capability for really the end-to-end -end automation. I will go deeper in the next slides. Then from the architecture side, there we still see that from the standardization point, there is still like a very monolithic view on software. And then another big topic is the whole end-to-end -end observability. I also would like to, to tell you more from, from our experience so far. So first, on the independence between network functions and CAS infrastructure, even PaaS. So their uh, application were still not really decoupled to some extent, so we see that with with them, um, there is still like a vertical integration towards Kubernetes. So it's, in our view, not, to all, not fully cloud native, where you just deploy, kill, deploy, kill containers, and even like have immutable containers or microservice in the end. It also, we, we saw um, that we often use this CRDs, which in the end had dependencies, and you could 
to some extent not deploy just any network function in the same Kubernetes cluster. And there also we see still like tight integration of different microservices. So this means that you could deploy a network function, but then you would need to add some day one configuration that other pods or microservices will start and this is something, yeah, we sh really should avoid in a cloud-native uh, environment. Then, then also scaling, especially on the user plane function, is still very limited. It's mainly due to specific telco protocols we need. So there we see that we still need to do upfront a very specific, like, low-level design to be able then to at least to scale to the to the resources we define up front. Then also something which is interesting is really this layer two segmentation. We in the telco industry use a lot of VPNs to separate different networks. And now if you go towards public cloud, yeah, they mainly offer you one VPN in the end, which then you need to build a lot of overlay Sec uh, separation which makes the whole networking very complex and still like the if you use an, uh, your NFVI and then on top you have your CAS it's still not very smooth all the upgrades so sometimes we saw that we kill the ne network functions and we had to re redeploy everything from scratch um, then more on the configuration management. So that's something yeah, it, which, which is very interesting. So we mostly dis, uh, discuss about deploying all the CNFs, but then it's like building a house, but in the end, it's not finished. So all the interior is still missing, like kitchen, stairs, electricity, which is like the day one configuration or the application configuration. So we have models to deploy a 5G core, so the containers, everything, but then to configure, there is um, a model still missing where you could go an abstraction layer on top in the end. So there we, we see that every network function like UPF, PCF, they have their own business logic with their own details, their own like failover scenarios, and this is just making us a lot of headaches in the end. Then there is still this, yeah, NetConf versus um, the cloud native way of using like config maps. So you have like one central point, you configure your network function versus more than immutable capability where you add the, the, the configuration of the application already during the deployment. So, so NetConf in the end is great, but on the other hand, you have very tight integration and it makes, yeah, it not very useful in case that you just can start kill, start kill any services. Then there is still the the complexity of the networking. So we didn't take this too serious at the beginning, but now we try really to deploy this 5G cores in public cloud. And there they don't offer all this telco specific capability. So there we need to find solution to make this possible. And really the last point, don't try to automate Excel. Really focus on building configuration as a code so to be able to have on top then some abstraction model that, because if you need, you can build like one network slice, but if you then want to build 20 network slice, you just cannot automatically generate your day one configuration for this, for what we see till now. And then more from the architecture or standards. So we say that the standards today, they are, not really cloud native. So they get in the way of decoupling. 
So there is still the trap of monolithic applications where we as telcos think really, yeah, there are all the boxes like UPF, AMF, and, and, and. So and you have your standardized interface, but in the end, this don't help us to really build a, like more uh, distributed systems, just a lot of microservice in the end, building your end-to-end -end service. And yeah, there we really should go more towards a microservice design instead of a large service design as we have today with the SBA in case. And then on top we have these complex failover scenarios from all the different network functions. So there we think we really should leverage more the native capability of, of some like service mesh to build this failover scenarios between microservice instead to build a layer on top very specific to telco environments. And then the whole observability. So we are very happy to see with cloud native network functions that observability, to some extent observability is already built in. So it's very easy to retrieve metrics, logs, traces, but still if you want then to get the end-to-end -end view, it's still very hard to, to get this together. So you cannot simply automate this. So there we need rather maybe models to help us to be able to, to stick together the different network functions and then as well do this in the observability view. And on the other hand, we also, especially in our case, saw that we have already quite a lot of tools in the observability space, like the standard PEM, FM, tap, tapping functionality for the traces, which in the end not really go very smooth hand in hand with all the new technologies like Prometheus, Open Telemetry, and Jagger, uh, Loki, and all these tools. So there we, we need to find the right solution. And also because of the very specific telco protocols, like the, the troubleshooting, especially in, in distributed system, it's, it's not just straightforward. So for, for some protocols, you cannot just use Jagger for distributed um, tracing in the end. So here would be our call for improvement. So really the main point is reduce network function complexity. We see more and more bigger network functions, which including tons of microservices, but in the end that just go in a direction that we treat as a CNF still like a pet. So we try to troubleshoot here, here, and instead of just deploy, and if it's not working, kill it, deploy it again, so this mindset need to more and more evolve in the end. So really avoid vertical integration. And yeah, sometimes we really need to redesign network function from scratch, really with the cloud native principles in mind. And then on the configuration management, yeah, we need somehow an abstraction or a model to be able to configure up to or many different network slices end to end so this capability is missing so there we think really it's a declarative and intent based automation for the configuration management is really the way to go and then on end to end service automation we really see the need as an operator that we want to run our 5G core workloads on any cloud. And this is not yet really working, what we see. We still need months or even years to implement a 5G core. We, we not can just hit the button and then it's deployed. When we can do, we do this, then we already spend like half a year to, to make everything working. And Really also something where I saw now a, a new project which could help there. It's really a, like a service API or like de facto standards to, to make the 
end-to-end -end automation working. So with this, I would end. So that's our conclusions. So I'm very happy that we started early at Swisscom. Uh, we really put automation as a key. So when we started to build this cloud-native environment, we said we want to start automate everything from day one. And we really invested the time to understand the technology. Regarding end-to-end -end service or orchestration or service management, we, sorry, we don't see this mature enough today. So there we still see the need for improvements. And we need service management in the end to, to run network slicing at scale. And one key point is as well, better adoption of cloud native principles for our, to improve our lifecycle management and the automation. And in the end, you really can simplify all what, all this I told you now in one simple sentence. So telco workload should not be special. So it should be like any other standard IT workload in the end. And I'm, I'm very happy that just a few weeks ago, they announced this Nevio project, which really, I think, like took into account a lot of topics we were, I was talking today. So I'm looking really forward to see this evolving. And um, yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for listening to me. It was a pleasure to be here, and I would love to take any questions. Hello, it's Pavel Pavlak, F5. So you mentioned about the vertical stack, so do you have any takeaways to how to move away from it? Any suggestions or lessons learned or ideas? Yeah, what we see is still that we have this telco-specific protocols like GTP, which don't allow for natting and there, also, we think we need to look into like software solutions, which will help us to, to provide there more flexibility that you don't have there this vertical integration in the end. And also, like today, we, we still need to use like Azure IOV to, for the hardware acceleration for the throughput. I think if there we Maybe could we do something with eBPF to make this much more flexible? I see like AWS are offering solutions where they claim to almost achieve line rate. So I think there it's, it's really on, the, on some network plugins for Kubernetes which could help us to avoid this vertical integration. Okay, thank you. And one more, one more question, if you, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So do you need CNFs for 4G? Yes, we are using it. So we, we build a 5G, 4G converged core. So we have CNFs, which are including microservice doing the, the 4G, as well the 5G part in, in, a, in a same yeah, CNF in the end. So have different interfaces. And maybe even this is maybe suboptimal for running like really independent services in the end. I, I personally also see like we have this very narrow way of defining CNFs like UPF, um, PCF and all this. But in the end, if you watch the whole cluster, it's more just like 100, 200, thousand microservices in a cluster providing you a service. And we do a lot of on top specific stuff to still be able to fulfill all the standards. But I'm not sure if, if we could maybe start 
to, to think a little bit different and more just let the microservices directly talk to each other of over service mesh, GPRC, and whatever is possible. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, when did you start the journey for the, the 5G core uh, transformation and uh, the stack adoption? Yeah, we, I would say we started two years ago where we like built a first team looking into like mainly the 5G assay core. So we started to build this from our network vendor, the first, they were like, they just started to deliver this 5G core function as containerized workloads in the end. So that was about two years ago. But I need to say, so today we don't have a product, productive system. We are still working on, because we said from beginning, we want to use this change to cloud native network function to also automate everything. And yeah, we are heavily investing in automating the whole life cycle of these network functions in the end. OK, and uh, did you start the same work for the radio access network? No, not. Okay. No, it's, it's really focused on, on the, the 5G core, or let's say 5G, 4G converged core. And really doing this together also with this thinking about we want to build end-to-end -end service where we build this service management framework on top in the end. OK, thank you. Uh, how many people are working on this project? Together we are now with service management and orchestration, maybe a little bit more than 40, 50 software, okay. cloud, and network engineers. Thank you. Hi, um, yeah, thanks again for the presentation. Right. It was great. Um, I have a question regarding around the whole um, relationship with like the major telco vendors like Ericsson and stuff, because you, know, you're, you guys are built completely on them uh, and get a lot of their you know, early features early. But then at the same time, you know, if you're creating this orchestration layer and being kind of first to it, and that's somewhat challenging, let's say like the telco ISV, I mean, how are you managing that relationship? Like how you bring them to the table and says, hey, we're gonna run this in Kubernetes, we're gonna do this and this, and then they're kind of stepping back saying, oh, well, we don't support that yet, you know? So it'd be great if you could like unpack a bit of that. Yeah, <laughs> very good question. I guess we were very lucky that our vendor was one of the earliest to deliver their 5G assay network function as a containerized workload. So we could start very early to learn what this means to deploy a network function into a Kubernetes cluster and they are yeah, like using microservices. But um, yeah, it's a, I, and because we are working very closely with our network function vendor, so we have a DevOps team where we have our network function vendor as well in the team, so they are as well DevOps engineer. So we get very close on, on yeah, also talking about improvements, what's not working as we expected. But it, it still, it, it takes a long time because there are in my view, still many objectives in the way, yeah, to really get cloud native workload in the end. Okay, thanks. And do you see this work being able to kind of create some critical mass by maybe open sourcing some of this so that it, you know, challenges the ecosystem a bit? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Lo I'm personally looking really forward for this uh, Nevio uh, project in the end because there I see. It addresses all the gaps, or a lot of the gaps we see during the last two years. Yeah. And I'm very keen yeah, to talk more about this. And I think that can be a, 
a right way to go to really improve network functions toward cloud native readiness. Cool, cool. Well, thank you very much and viel Spaß. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, you mentioned Agile, you mentioned DevOps uh, yes. and things like that, and you've shown a few diagrams. Can you perhaps speak to your experience that you had with moving what you've built here, in fact, into day two, into operations? I think m uh, many of us still have knocks and socks and you have like isolated ops people. How did you change all of that when you brought your technology to, to that arena? Yeah. yeah, honestly, I have to say, we are not yet in operation. But still, the way we want to go is really that we have the DevOps team really, oper or like SEC DevOps team really managing everything. So we are also questioning exi existing processes. Example, yeah, today there we use like NetCool for all the uh, more the observe, uh, operation part of managing the, the different incidents and everything. And there we now like started to use like uh, PagerDuty or OpsGenie, which is much more built for DevOps team. But then we still need to see how we integrate to the existing process for level two support and everything. So there we are still in ongoing process, I would say. Okay, so perhaps next year you'll give us a talk on uh, how that went. Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay, so the last question. Okay. Hi, great presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank um, you. I was thinking you are early starters, I realized, which is, I mean, impressive. And I see you're facing a lot of challenges that other operators may not yet, because they're still waiting a bit, right, to yeah. see the landscape. And you have a lot of dependencies as well with uh, suppliers, vendors, telco protocols, and so on. So the question is, where do you see, what is your goal, your vision, and have you quantified that when I reach my end goal, that I have solved all my challenges, the network looks like something, right? Yeah. You quantify the benefits, like, okay, I did it, I fully automated, I see your challenges. What is the, finally, the... Was it worth it finally, and what was the, the benefit? So the final goal would be really that we can use our service management or tools framework really to deploy our workload. We need to, to provide telecommunication service over any infrastructure. So we want to be able to design in the service management and then what is available, where we get the best resources or whatever, to be able to deploy it and as well to life cycle it. So the whole CI CD or also continuous testing is, is a big thing in, in this. So in the able, yeah, it's, it's the, automation is key if you want to operate hundreds of network slices. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, well, thank you for all the questions and I'm looking forward to listen to all the following presentations. Thank you very much.